What's going on everyone, it's your boy the Valve Soldier yet again in another YouTube video and today with my boy Stifler. What's going on Stifler? What's up? That was a nice du duels match just now, right? Yeah, could've done better. It is what it is. Now before we start, do you give me permission to upload this video on all the platforms that I have? Yeah. Enjoy the conversation, enjoy the gameplay, and let's get started. So we got Warzone Season 3. What's your thoughts on this season so far? I just picked it up back probably a week ago, so it's, it's alright. I still like the old school, uh, regular Warzone from back in the day. So you think the first ever Warzone map was the best map? Oh yeah, Verdansk was the best. Out of all the games out there to play in the world, there's Fortnite, there's Overwatch 2, Apex Legends. Why Warzone out of all the other games? I just like the first person shooter. I usually play this or I'll play something like Fallout. And they didn't come out with like a new Fallout show? Yeah, it was good. I watched it. Really? Yeah, I like the if oh. you if you're a fan of the game you like the show. Yeah, yeah. Does she do does she do a good job, the main the main girl? Yeah, she was good. They had a lot of uh kind of random surprise actors in it. Tell us your loadout to win matches. Uh, my go-to is probably the Vix, Victus S XMR, and then grab some type of SMG with it. Uh, usually running Ghost and uh, Cold-Blooded. You know, throw down a few bouncing Bettys, and then pick up some Syntex. What do you think about the Battle Pass this season? Uh, I haven't bought it. I, like I said, I just got back to playing this like a, a week ago, so... You know, it's, it's okay so far. I, I still like some of the, the old guns. If you can talk to the Call of Duty developers, what will you tell them to make this game much better? I say go back to the roots. What do you mean by that? You know, MW2, original, that kind of stuff. You gotta bring that type of gameplay back. How much of the Bible do you know? Uh, I would say a pretty good. I went to Catholic school, so. What's your favorite story in the Bible? I, honestly, I'm not not a big fan of it. I used to be a practicing Catholic, but I'm not anymore. What do you think the main point of the Bible is? The main point is trying to tell each and every single person on Earth. What do you think it is? Uh, it's probably just in general morality. You know, uh, take the good with the bad and try and do more good than bad. Stifler, would you like to know what the main point of the Bible? What it's trying to tell the whole world? Sure. Okay, here we go. Do you consider yourself a good person? Yeah, I would say so. Let's run through that really quickly. Stifler, have you ever told a lie before? Yep. The Bible says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. We all know lying is bad, we all get it, but that's what the Bible says. Next question. Have you ever stolen anything before? Uh, yeah. So have I. We've all broken that commandment, thou shalt not steal. Have you heard of it? Yep. Thou shalt not steal. Next one. Have you ever used God's name in vain? And think about it, we're on the internet, we're on Warzone. Oh yeah. There are people out there that don't believe that God is real, but just assume. If God created the universe, the stars, the planets, the ocean currents, the wind currents, the air that we're breathing right now, the water that we drink, shouldn't we treat his name with 100% respect? Yeah. We should, but people drag his name through the dirt and that's blasphemy. It's very serious. It's a blasphemy when we use God's name in vain. Next question. Have you ever lusted over someone? Yep. Yeah. Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, he said this. He said, But I say to you that whoever looks upon a woman and lusts for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. I'm going to say it one more time. But I say to you that whoever looks upon a woman and lusts for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So someone commits adultery just by looking at a woman that way. Imagine thinking about her. Let's look at the facts. And this is very general. People all around the world lie, steal, commit adultery, blaspheme, dishonor their mother and father, and the list goes on. 
Now, do you agree with me that we live in a world where people sin on a daily basis? Yeah, definitely. Of course. Now, I'm going to give you a super fake example. Super fake. Here we go. Imagine a meteor came to Earth and it wiped out half of humanity. I'm talking about millions and millions and millions of people are dead. They're standing in front of God. The books are open. All the bad sins laid out right in front of them. Each and every single person has to give an account. First the mailman, then the garbage truck guy, then the engineer, then the professor, then the teacher. Everyone has to give an account. Where do you think the majority going to go? Heaven or hell? What's your thoughts? That's probably 50-50. There are people, biblically speaking, that are headed to hell. And that's sad. But there's good news. God perfect in love, he did something beautiful for us. God rich in love, he did something amazing for us. What did God do for guilty sinners like me and you, Sifla? What's that? Have you ever seen in the movies or a picture of Jesus Christ dying on the cross? Yeah. I've seen that and there's people who see that as well. But a lot of people don't really ultimately get what that means. So I'm going to explain it. Imagine you yourself are in court. You go to the judge, you walk up to the judge and like, Hi, it's me, Stifler. I play Warzone, I get them doves, but look. I know I've lied, stolen, committed adultery, blaspheme. I did a lot of bad things in my life. But look, judge, I'm a good guy. I gave the charity. Can you please let us slide, judge? Come on, it's me, Stifler. Can you let us slide? What is a good judge supposed to say? He's supposed to give you the proper accommodation for what kind of character he believes you have. A good and righteous judge has to say no. Justice demands you pay for your crimes. Justice demands you go to jail. And off to jail you go. But before the sentence is carried out, what if somebody comes into your courtroom? He pays your fine. You're legally allowed to be set free. The case is closed. It's done. Legally, you don't have to go to jail anymore. He paid the price. You couldn't pay. And now, no more jail. And he did it out of love because he cares for you and he loves you. How will you feel towards that person who did that for you, Stifler? Be thankful. Extremely grateful, right? Yep. And guess who that person is? God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross. Have you ever heard of John 3.16? Yeah. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Translation to understand more. Oh, I get it now. If I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and make him my Lord and Savior, he's going to forgive me of all the bad sins I've ever done in my life. He's going to forgive me of everything, but not because of anything I've done. I can't keep giving money to charity every single day, millions and millions every single day to earn my way to heaven. That's not how it works. Jesus Christ paid it all for me. Does it make sense, Stifler? Yeah. Jesus Christ said this, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Translation, if you don't get what he's saying, think of it this way. He's saying, Hey everybody, everything I'm saying is 100% the truth, and I'm the only way to heaven. There is no other way but me. Now a lot of other religions may be offended by that, but if Jesus Christ did die, come back three days later, and everything in the New Testament happened, I'm going to believe everything Jesus says. Does that make sense, Stifler? Yep. Congratulations. You now know what the main point of what the Bible's trying to say. Stifler. Hearing all this information, yep. here's the one million dollar question. When do you think you're going to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? When do you think you're going to repent and make him your Lord and Savior? Give him your life, give him your heart, give him everything. When do you think you're going to do that? I'll probably just keep doing what I'm doing. Do you know how many people die per year? I don't know the exact number. Over 50 million people die per year, bro. People making plans going to the movies, going to the club, going to the concert, going wherever. And what happens? Bam, car accident. People die at the, at the hospital. People die in their, in their sleep. Tomorrow is not promised to you, me, or anyone. 
Make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior today. That is the best advice, the best recommendation I can give you, bro. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. Definitely like, share, and subscribe. Definitely share this with, with a family member or friend. They need to know what the main point of the Bible is. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you talk to someone about Jesus Christ, you too are a devout soldier. You know, I talk to my, my family about this a lot. I, I yearn to have that intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, to go to him for everything. I kind of come and go as I please. And I just have to be more disciplined about it, you know, because it's, it's all a choice. And, you know, sometimes when things are going good, I forget why things are going good. Um, and then when things are going bad, of course, we reach out and we look for him to kind of help us and guide us and, you know, put us back on track. But it should always be that case, not just when things are going good or when things are going bad. It should be all the time. So I've given my life to Jesus Christ. Um, he is my Lord and Savior. Uh, I just need to be more consistent with you know like you said reading my bible that should be the number one novel that i pick up every day um something that i just have to be more consistent with so i'm just honestly thankful that i got the opportunity to to, to learn more about god and jesus today um talk to a feather uh, a fellow follower of of jesus christ um this is honestly the best gaming session i've had in my life <laughs> and we're not even gaming man we're just two two guys talking about uh jesus christ being uh open and and honest and noble and you know just just talking about the our, our savior man this is awesome but like we need we need more content like this um we're, we're all about um clickbait and you know stuff that has all the bells and whistles but that's not a lot of that stuff doesn't really have any substance uh, um and and this has substance this has meaning you are helping somebody that you didn't even know um 45 minutes ago i'm coming into this interview open-minded and didn't know that i was going to get this much education on on jesus the bible no just everything. So I think this is something that's needed, and I think you should definitely keep doing it. All your hardships in life and all your victories in life, give it to Jesus. He's the reason. He's the way.